So Bob and Gus, Bob and Gus are trying to hold up these beams. So uh, we are going to try to figure out how much Bob has to push up on the upper beam in order to hold everything where it needs to be. So where should we start? Free body diagrams, okay? And I think I touched on this last time. You don't have to be super detailed with your free body diagrams, right? You don't have to make them look exactly like they really are. Um, so I'm going to make the upper beam look like this. I'm going to make the lower beam look like this. Okay. I'll tell you what. Yeah, you like that? It looks exactly like they really do. So and then I'll offset them just a little bit there. All right. So I've got those things. Actually, I'm also going to draw a free body diagram of Bob. Okay. Bob is over here. That's Bob. Okay. I also want to draw a free body diagram of Gus. I'm going to make Bob a little bit bigger, all right? Bob is, is this thing right here. I'm going to also show Gus. Okay. So here are my bodies that are involved in this problem. Now let's look at, we're going to have to start uh, with one of them. Which one do you want to start with? Okay, Gus. So what we have with Gus is that the beam... Uh, the upper beam is going to be pushing down on Gus with a certain amount of force. Okay? And what do you want to name that force? Okay. Okay. Well, let's actually do this. And the other thing that happens on Gus is that he has his own weight, and then he has the force of the beam pushing back up on him like this. Okay? So what is his weight? 230 pounds. That's that one right there. Um, so maybe we'll say up here, this is F Gus in his hands. Okay, this is F Gus feet. Okay, how do you think Bob works? He's the same thing, it's just a different weight, right? So he has, uh, Bob weighs 120 pounds, right? So that's 120 pounds right there. Uh, he has the force in his feet pushing up like this. So F Bob feet. And up here we have F Bob hands. Okay, so those are two free body diagrams here that I'm going to be working with. What else? Okay, we have the weight of the beams, which happen near the center of the beams, right? So uh, right here in the middle, I have the weight, 110 pounds. <clears throat> then what? The other beam as well. So over here in its center, I have 110 pounds. What else? Okay, forces in the pins. So over here on the right end of the upper beam, uh, there is a pin. How does a pin act? Like on a free body diagram, how do you represent a pin? Okay, it does not allow movement in the up, up and down direction, which means there must be a force applied there that prevents that. There is also potential of applying a horizontal force that prevents motion in the horizontal direction. Okay, so I'm gonna call this uh, you know, this, maybe I'll just call it the uh, reaction upper uh, in the Y, and this is the reaction upper uh, in the X. Okay. What else? Okay. Well, I also have the force of Gus, Gus's hands, right? Pushing up like this, F Gus hands. Okay, what else? Same thing with Bob. So I have F Bob hands.
Okay, what else? Okay, and now I've got their feet down here. So I've got a force uh, acting from Gus's feet right here, F Gus feet. And what else? F Bob feet. And I may not have drawn all of this perfectly uh, to scale, but you know we'll we'll deal with it. So this is F Bob feet. All right. It's a lot going on, isn't it? It's a lot of arrows. Do, are we missing anything? Yeah, there's another pin here um, where we have, uh, you know, the lower beam connected to this pin. So what do I have there? Okay, I'll. S R lower uh, Y, and then I'll have another one here, R lower X. What was the question? Yeah, so um, I, I, it ended up being drawn a little bit weird. I tell you what, um, why don't we separate all these now? I wanted to show you how they all interacted with one another, all in one place. The thing is, though, once you have them drawn, you deal with each free body diagram individually in terms of the math, right? And it might help if we separate them uh, in order to do that. So let me do this. I'm going to take all of this stuff. I'm going to slide it down a little bit. Okay. And I have that free body diagram right there. Okay. Let's think about what we might be able to do to eliminate things that we eliminate variables out of our resulting expression that we don't care about. Okay. We get some moments around the pin. So I guess before we go too far here, what else do I need on my free body diagram? Axes. Axes. Okay. So let me put them like this. What else? Distances. Distances, right? So I need to figure out how far it is from that pin to where Gus has his hands applied. And we can see just how badly um, the scaling is off on here, but that's okay. Three feet to there. Four feet. Just believe me. Just trust me. That's four feet. What's left? Seven feet. All right. Yeah, that's, that's not too far bad. The, the four foot one's maybe a little ridiculous to think about, but all right. And we don't care what the reactions are at the pin, right? The, the R upper X, R upper Y. So that might be a good place to sum moments around. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and do that for this free body diagram. We're going to sum moments around the pin for this upper diagram. And what will I have? Negative F Bob hands. Oh. <clears throat> Times what? Times 14 feet. Then what? plus 110 pounds times 7 feet, minus F Gus hands, times 3 feet, equals 0. So there I have one equation that has two unknowns in it, right? Okay. So I can't solve it yet. And if I add an x equation for that diagram, it doesn't help because I add r upper x. If I add a y equation, it doesn't help because it adds r upper y, right? So I'm just going to leave that one alone for right now. And what do you think I want to deal with next? Okay, maybe the lower one. Okay, so I'm going to try to grab the things that I care about here. How about that? Close enough. Okay, and we'll deal with this free body diagram. What do I need to add? 
Okay, I need to add a y-axis and an x-axis. What else? Distances? Okay, so how far is it from uh, where Gus's feet are applied to where the pin is on the lower? Okay, it is four feet from Gus's feet to the pin. So I'm going to put that on here. Four feet. Okay, what else? How far is it from the pin to the 110 pound force? Two feet. Okay. And then how far is it from, uh, let's say, the pin to where Bob's feet are? Okay. And based on this free body diagram, I can write another equilibrium equation. The one that I probably find most useful is a sum of moments around the pin, again, because that eliminates my reaction forces at the pins, which I, which I don't care about for this, uh, for this problem that what it's asking. All right, so what do I need to put on here? Okay, positive F bob feet. times what? Seven feet? Then what? 110 Plus 110 pounds times two feet. Okay, and then we have F gus feet, which is minus, because it tends to create a clockwise tendency to rotate. So F gus feet times what? Four feet. Now what? Okay, that's it for that equation. Believe it or not, we're really close. Okay, why? Okay, now for these diagrams here, for Gus, we can sum forces in the Y for Gus. Right? If I sum forces in the Y, I have minus F Gus hands, then what? Minus 230 pounds, then what? Plus F Gus feet <coughs> equals zero. To solve this for F Gus feet. And what would that be? F Gus hands, what then? Plus 230 pounds. Okay. And so now I can go ahead and apply this substitution. Same, same one or to this, you know, this is actually a proper one now. So F Gus feet is going to be equal to F Gus hands plus 230 pounds. Okay, and then what am I going to do, do you think, for F bob feet? Okay, it's going to be equal to F bob hands then what? Plus 120 pounds. Okay, and that would be based on the same type of thing on that free body diagram, a sum of forces in the vertical direction. All right, so now what? You can solve this system. How do you do that? Okay, well, we have a nice tool to be able to do that kind of thing. The first equation, how do I put that in? Okay. First of all, we put in, uh, we want in equation mode, we're going to do a two by two. And what's the coefficient of my first variable there? Negative 14. What's the coefficient of my second variable? Okay. Well, the second variable is F Gus hands, right? So, yeah, negative 3. Oops. All right, then what? 
okay? The last thing I had is this positive 110 times seven feet, but that is expecting that on the other side of the expression, so I put in a negative 110 times seven. Okay, and that takes care of my first expression. The next one's just a little bit more tricky. What do I need to do here? Okay, I basically need to, to distribute that seven feet amongst F Bob hands and 120 pounds. Okay, so the part that is just F Bob hands, what do I do for just that? It'll just be seven, positive or negative? Positive. What about for F Gus feet, just the part that is, or F Gus hands for the, uh, uh, for this other one over here? Negative four. Okay, now this is the one where it gets a little tricky. Okay, the, first, the easy part is what? Okay, I would do a negative 110 times two. That takes care of the term that I already knew I had there, but what else do I need to do? Right, minus 120 times seven, and then what else? Okay, plus 230 times four. Why is it plus? Well, it's negative over here and I'm moving it over to the other side. So plus 230 times four. And it tells me here that uh, the first variable, which was F Bob hands, is going to be equal to 34.55, we'll say. What was it again? 34.55. Thank you. 34.55 pounds. And now uh, F Gus hands is going to be equal to 95.45. Okay, what was it we were looking for? F. Bob hands, the force in his hands. Uh, and we said there it was 34.55 up here. That would mean we answer B. So, you know, that is a, a way of doing it where you really spell out for each body exactly how each body works. Um, some people are able to look at a problem like this and very directly apply these relationships of things like F Bob hands plus 120 pounds or F Gus hands plus 230 pounds. That's okay as long as you can correctly do that in your head mentally, but this shows why that is the case with the free body diagrams. So hopefully that's helpful. I know we're out of time. I'll see you all later.